good evening to the ones who are watching us over the internet. I hope we can have a good night, right? Together. And I brought to you guys tonight a lecture about prisons. Isn't that weird? Talk about prisons in the spiritual center? Maybe not. I brought you guys this uh, uh, lecture, this subject, because uh, we are having the classes for Andrea Luis book, which is the, in the greater world, and it is about the chapter 13 that we had like uh, a couple weeks ago maybe, about the effect of psychosis. That was a chapter that, you know, got me the attention and, and made, me, made me think about talking about this kind of subject, prisons. The chapter is about effective psychosis, but the prisons is the title that I, I came up with because it's more like you know, it's it's it is more like it, it's gonna explain itself easier, I guess. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna introduce you guys to a video that I brought, and uh, if you guys want to know, it's from the Amigos da Luz channel. Okay, the video is a prison is the name. This is the QR code if you guys want to go and, and scan it so you're going to get right through the YouTube if you, if you scan. But I'm going to ask um, Gualter to show us because he's going to put directly from the YouTube to us. And Gualter, if you can, please. And we're going to watch this video to introduce the, the lecture itself. All right. If you can turn off the light, please. What que é isso? Onde é que eu tô? Isso aqui é uma prisão? Oh! Por que que me prenderam aqui? Eu sou inocente! Gente, eu não tô me lembrando de nada. Eu tava conversando com a Raquel e eu vim... Oh! Por que que me prenderam? Eu não tenho direito a um advogado, não! Tenho o direito de permanecer calado. Dá pra parar de gritar? Cara, eu sou inocente. Eu não sei o que aconteceu. Eu, eu tava conversando com a minha esposa e de repente eu parei aqui. Eu não me lembro de nada, cara. Se você não lembra de nada, como é que você tá falando que é inocente? Deve ter esquecido. Você bebe? Não, eu não bebo, eu não bebo, eu não fumo. Eu sou certinho. Eu sou certinho até demais. Cara, os certinhos também são presos, parceiro. Que parceiro? Olha aqui, meu irmão, não sou parceiro de bandido não, tá ok? Alguém, por favor, alguém me tira daqui, alguém me escuta. Você tá falando com quem, amigo? Sei lá com o que eu tô falando, eu tô falando com quem me prendeu. Alguém aí, por favor. Ninguém te prendeu aqui, parceiro. Olha aqui, meu nome é João, cara. Você mesmo entrou aqui sozinho. Aliás, não tem outro jeito de entrar aqui nem de sair, parceiro. Você tá maluco? Quem é que se prende por vontade própria? Eu? Você? Tanta gente? Alguém, por favor, alguém me tira da mesma cela que esse maluco aqui, por favor? Que maluco é você, rapaz. Que fica gritando, falando sozinho. Que que é isso? Que que você tá fazendo com a foto da Raquel? Raquel? Ah, parece mais a Juliana. Eu tava tentando adivinhar o nome. O que, que você tá fazendo com a foto da Raquel na mão? Fala logo! Ela caiu da sua mão quando você entrou na cela! Ela é o quê? Tua namorada? Esposa! Quer dizer, ela ontem me pediu o divórcio. Mas ela não vai se ver livre de mim, não vai! Tá entendendo? E pelo jeito, nem eu, né? Meu Deus! Será que eu fiz alguma coisa com a Raquel ontem à noite? Você gostava muito dela, né? Gostava? Eu amo a minha esposa, cara. Eu amo ela mais do que tudo. Mais do que tudo? Então pode puxar uma cadeira que tu vai ficar aqui por muito tempo. Não é, Pedro? Oi, só um minuto. Papai já fala com você, filho. Falta só mais um relatório. Papai depois leva você no cinema, tá bom? Ih, não esquenta a cabeça com o Pedro, não. Vive ocupado. Se quiser fazer amizade mesmo, vai conhecer outro cara aí bem mais simpático. Ué, eu não tô ocupado, eu sei que tô comendo. Tô mais feliz, você vai ficar? Não, não, valeu. Tu quer, parceiro? Que parceiro, meu irmão? Já disse que eu não sou parceiro de bandido? Meu nome é João. É, João. Tá vendo? João. Sabe ler? Só mais um gole. Aqui ninguém é bandido, rapaz. Aqui ninguém nunca matou, nunca roubou, coisa parecida. Aqui só tem pessoas do bem, honestas. Que nunca ficou tudo. Tentando viver nossas vidas. É mentira, cara. É mentira. Você tava ameaçando a Raquel, não é? Ô, dá pra fazer silêncio aí? Eu tô trabalhando. Fala. Liberdade é mais do que andar solto por aí, parceiro. Que isso, hein, galera? Aqui todo mundo também é certinho, João. Você bebe? Mas é como eu disse. Os certinhos, um dia também podem acabar presos. É só perder a chave. 
João, eu amo ela mais do que tudo. Mas ela não vai se ver livre de mim, não vai. Ai, meu Deus, tô muito gorda. Você é a Nora que a mamãe pediu. Ai, meu Deus, o porcento de bateria. Acho que se eu passar lá em três vezes dá, hein? Só mais um gole, vai ser só mais um gole. It is a very interesting video. And maybe now it makes kind of sense why we're talking about prisons in the Spiritist Center, right? Before we go ahead with the lecture, you can turn on the lights, yes. I'm gonna bring you guys, and you guys all know me, because I love, because I love this, this friend of mine here. And you guys know him, of course. Mas eu achei que eles tivessem um esquema de proteção aqui, tipo... Porque um Sócrates é o que você é da Harry Potter, você é vida real. Não, eu me lembro de que eles estão te protegendo aqui, tá? Eles só deixavam entrar aqui e eles queriam. Então eles devem ter fugido, como souberam que era eu que estava chegando aqui. Eu já chego arrebentando, com sangue nos olhos, a minha fúria insana, demolidor de centros espíritos. Ou relaxaram na vigilância e deixaram uma brecha para a gente entrar, né? Mas não se brecha, se não se brecha, se não se brecha, se não se brecha, se não se brecha. E agora chega de papo furado, Probably vamos começar o trabalho. Tem que botar isso tudo aqui abaixo. Como assim botar tudo abaixo? Tá abaixo, right? um monte de coisa espírita, essas palhaçadas. Você devia estar até a turma da Mônica no espírito agora. Olha aqui, mural de aviso, isso é coisa espírita. Olha aqui o, o bazar. Esse But monte de roupa tá do aqui não é, isso é bazar. Uh, o povo quando está de bazar for, é espírita. O sexto so it. livro de Kardec tinha que ser isso. Ele fala sobre muitas coisas. E é isso. Sim, destruir, destruir isso tudo aqui. Acabar com essa palhaçada. Como assim, destruir o prédio? É, é bonito, é bonito. Não dá. And we don't even notice that we are the ones holding them with us, okay? Things that we do every day and we don't know, we don't notice, we don't have the conscious that we are doing with us, holding these things, you know, inside us. We don't have the conscious that we are doing with us, holding these things, you know, inside us. So, it could be a cigarette, it could be food, as we saw the guy, okay? It could be people. Attached to people, muito. to work, ah, to laziness, to, to violence, anger, alcohol, slander. Ah, a gente pode fazer o que sempre funcionou. A gente pode atuar em cima deles, em cima do presidente do centro, em cima da diretora do centro, em cima dos médios, em cima dos palestrantes, das estrelas. E botar um querendo ser melhor que o outro, sabe? A última bolacha do pacote de Kardec. Vaidade. Já tem, já tem. Nem vou precisar da gente. Vaidade tem uns montes aí e o centro continua funcionando. Preguiça. A gente podia plantar umas coisas. Coisas assim para os trabalhadores da casa, não vai para o centro hoje, não. Tem casa, vai ver uma série na TV, vai frequentar o centro. Esse grupo já está fazendo tanta coisa ali, mas não, não é nada, é preguiça. Preguiça? Que nós nos arrastamos em tudo. E o centro está funcionando. Egoísmo. E nós mantemos discórdia, muitas coisas. Fofoca, é o que nos falta. Pô, mas como é que esse centro ainda está funcionando? Então, nós nos encarceramos em esses vícios e muitos diferentes outros, e nós não podemos. Sai de mim, rapaz, sai de mim que sou do... Eu te pego com uma voadora aqui agora mesmo, hein? Vem não, hein? Então dá logo essa voadora dele, ele é um dos protetores da casa, ele vai prender a gente aqui. Se eu não tivesse com a coluna ruim, te quebrava agora mesmo aqui, rapaz. Que coluna? Que coluna? Você não tem mais coluna, não? Ah, é, eu não tenho coluna, não. Não vamos prender ninguém, vocês são bem-vindos, fiquem tranquilos. Bem-vindo. Right? So that's why the video brought us... Sim, mas acabaram percebendo que John, das confusões que vocês queriam espalhar por aqui, 8, esse centro já está cheio, 32, né? Ué, porque já chegou alguém antes da gente aqui, é? You will Meus know amigos, the truth, esse centro espírita é feito por pessoas normais, free. cada um com suas próprias dificuldades. Mas alguns estão querendo aprender, tentando you know, domar suas mais inclinações. Porque uma vez que nós sabemos a verdade, porque exercitam a vigilância, nem um centro espírita é perfeito. Cada centro, igreja, sinagoga, sinagoga, Meaning that once we start the process of seeking knowledge, which is very important, the study, seeking knowledge as a whole, about everything, knowing ourselves, as we said in the first slide, and following the natural laws, because one thing leads to another. Step by step, ok? We're gonna start seeking the knowledge. Era só mais o centro que a gente obsediava, mas o mentor boladão ali estava de guarda. De inveja e preguiça e vaidade não falta mais pra espalhar confusão. Já não varia de nada. Chegamos de voadora, pedra, papel e paulada, mas nós quebramos a cara com a coluna travada. Our natural laws. They're not about religion. They're not about uh, which church you go to. Okay? It is inside of us. 
And then no matter the doctrine of religion, we will become more spiritual and less materialistic, being able then to free ourselves from those prisons, little by little. Understanding, that's the only way, understanding the things, comprehending things about us and things that are surrounding us. All those vices that we talked about, all those situations that we talked about in the previous slide. So, as the guy said, the partner, right? Everyone can end up prisoners. Because we only need to lose the key. So we think about ourselves, no, I'm okay, we're good. I'm a spiritualist, I'm okay, I understand things, I study a lot. I know those things, you know, I know, I just, you know, I just watch like, you know, two classes today or, you know, I come here like Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday and Sunday and all the time. But if, what if we already um lost the key for some things ações, and we didn't even notice? And I don't need to go Porque too far. Eu, minha casa, um copo In de this leite, room, all of us lost some in a some situations. So we are prisoners in some way for one of those situations and, and things or Garota, você any sabe other que eu that you might name it. So the guy was <laughs> very, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, he was very intelligent <laughs> when he put this way, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> everyone, <laughs> the right guy, <laughs> the wrong guy, <laughs> men, <laughs> women, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyone can be can become prisoner. We just need to lose the key. And we do. We lose the key. And in order to find the key, once we lost it, of course, we're going to have to do the effort to, you know, find it. In order to find the key and not to be a prisoner, we need to be aware. We need to start being aware and start looking for it. Of course, right? We need to watch and we need to pray. Because we need to see things around. We need to really, really pay attention around this. And we really need to connect with spirituality, with God. Spirituality, we can name it spirits, higher spirits, we can name it angels, we can name it you know, Jesus, we can name it Buddha, we can whatever name you want to give it. But we need to watch, we need to pray, we need to connect with, with the spirits, with the spirituality, with God. That's why, and then I brought you this, because I thought it was very, very uh, uh, close to it, to the subject we're talking. That's why the salvation gate, have you heard about the salvation gate? No. The salvation gate is narrow. Large, large is the other gate, because the salvation gate is really narrow. We need to really use and make use of our free will over ourselves to overcome our bad tendencies, all those things that we are, we are used to do it, to break through our bad habits that we have and become better spirits. Right? This is something that only few of us, only few of us are willing to do in our everyday basis. Most we don't pay attention to what we do in, in our daily basis. Because those Mas things are habits. Agora we don't pay attention anymore. Those Agora things are um automatic. We just Joga do them. And we, we don't know. Agora we don't notice. We don't know that we're doing. And sometimes we're doing exactly those things and, and, and many others, as I said. Cigarettes. Oops. Cigarettes. We talk about it. Food. We talk about it. Uh, work that we work, where we, we work a lot. Laziness, because we don't want to work anyway. You know, things like that that we go through, you know, sadness because I feel sad and then I'm not going to do anything else in my life because I feel sad. And then we do this because it's a habit. We don't feel anything anymore. We're just doing it. Sometimes it's just like an illness. I feel like, you know, sick every time. I don't even know what it is, but I feel that way. Well, how come you don't know what it is and you feel that way and you keep doing it? You keep feeling that way. You're not going to do anything about it? Ah, no, because it's just normal. I feel this way, you know, for so long already, since I was a kid. What? 
And you didn't do anything about it yet? At 54? No, that's kidding. That's my, my age. No. <laughs> I'm not the one. <laughs> I don't feel sick. <laughs> No, just kidding. But we do these things every day. It's a habit, you know. And sometimes it is so deep inside of us that we really don't notice. It's normal. It becomes normal. We're not aware of it anymore. So we're not watching. If we're not watching, we're not able to know ourselves and go through this process. So which means I'm becoming a prisoner of those things, you know? And these things is the complement of the maxim, many are called, but few are chosen. Understand now the narrow gate, the salvation gate? Because that's exactly what it means. Because we're gonna be called. We are being called all the time. But few are chosen. Why few are chosen if everyone is being called? If everyone is, is, you know, someone is screaming our names out loud, but we're not listening. We don't listen. We're not listening. Because we are the ones who choose to be the ones. We are not chosen. Many are called, right? But few are chosen because we choose to be the ones. We are not chosen. We choose to do the effort. We choose to change ourselves. We choose to go through another direction, another path, a different path in my life. I choose to be the one chosen. I choose to be the one being the, doing the effort to be able to go through the narrow door because it takes a lot of courage. It takes an effort, like a, I don't even know how we can measure this effort. It's not easy. It's not easy because I name it like few situations only. One slide with few situations, probably 20 maybe, I don't know. Only one slide with 20 prisons that we can be at. If I want to get out of there, I got to do an effort. I got to make an effort and do it by myself. Nobody's going to do it for me. Do I have this willing to do it? Do we? Do we want to do it? Or we want to stay in the same place we are? It doesn't matter. It's not hurting me anymore. Sometimes we hear that, right? No, it's not hurting anymore. Don't worry about it. But it is. It is hurting. Sometimes it is hurting and we don't feel anymore. And we're stuck in that prison. And we have to do something about it, right? Remember, just remember that many are called, but few are chosen. Because we are the one choosing to be the ones. God is not choosing us. We are choosing to go and reach God, because God exists. We are the ones that we, we want to go to God. We have to do the effort to go to God, to God, right? And then we go, why we are going to lose the key? Some questions, and then I brought you guys some little things from the book. Of course, the book is one you know, entire chapter about the, the affective uh, psychosis, as I said, which is the, the people attachment, let's say, right? Because the person was going to commit suicide because you know, she was abandoned by you know, uh, her fiancé, blah, blah, blah. That, that's the situation uh, from the book. But I brought you guys little things that, you know, that was in the, the chapter of the book. So why are we going to lose the key? Is not the present enough to us so we can think about it a little bit? Is not the present what are we doing right now, what are we living right now, what are we going through right now enough to us? Why we want some more or a lot more? Is not the present enough filled with blessed service and renewal, renewing light? Or we don't notice 
the blessed service and the renewing light surrounding us. Are we in this dark place that we don't even know that there is light out there? We got to think about those things. Because if we don't see those, you know, uh, sunny places, we lost the key. We need to get back, right? Why we are going to lose the key? If we can take advantage of the minutes in the transformation of our destiny, your destiny, and work every hour to bring your aspiration to higher spheres. Why am I going to keep myself in those places if the only thing I have to do is work, make the effort to get out of there? It's going to be me starting with one step only one step ahead. Don't be stuck. Don't be stuck in one place, no matter what. Don't be stuck. Move. Do something. Make the energy move around you. Because that's what we need to do. Because otherwise, if we get stuck, everything is going to fall down. All the dirt is going to fall over our feet and then it's going to get more difficult, heavier, worse to do something. That's the meaning of the word stuck, right? You cannot move. So movement is the word. No matter what situation we are, no matter what prison we arrested ourselves into it. Try to move. Oh, but now I'm already in this prison. Now I am already, you know, in this place. How do I do to, f what do I do to find the key? I don't know. Start looking around. Maybe, you know, in this little room of yours, this little dark room of yours, you know, if you cannot see, go with the hand, do something. Watch around. Try to pray, maybe. Try to pray. Right? Connect. Divinity, God, spirits, Buddha, whoever. Anybody there? Anybody out there who can help me? Because there are many anybodies out there, if we can say that. Many of them waiting for us, waiting for our call. Right? Why we are going to lose the key if God places us exactly where we can be the most valuable, useful, and happy? Do we feel the, this way? Do we feel valuable, useful, and happy today? Because there is no meaning to have any to watch or participate of any lecture or class or whatever in person or YouTube or whatever if we don't do these things that we listen now in our lives now if we don't start putting you know these things in practicing these things exercising those things right now in our lives because otherwise we're gonna be stuck in one place listen Listen to YouTube, watching YouTube, but nothing, nothing else. Be only this. We have to act upon ourselves, right? If God places us exactly where we have to be in order to have a mission, expiation, trial, whatever. Maybe it's a trial, maybe it's an expiation. I don't even have a mission if I think like that. But of course, everyone... Every single one of us has a mission anyway, just so you know. If you didn't know, now you guys know, you know, think about it. But no matter what, we are in the right place. We are in the right place. We were put by God in the right place to be happy, to be useful to someone. To ourselves, maybe, we don't know. But we have to take advantage, as the previous slide, of every second, of every hour, to look around, watch and see whatever is going on around us and 
really see it and make sure and have faith in God because he wouldn't put in any any different place besides to be happy, besides to be valuable, besides to have a mission or something that we should do. It could maybe change tomorrow because if I know, if I watch and I know exactly what I'm doing today here in this place or with someone else or out there, it doesn't matter the place. If I know what I'm doing, then I understand. Then, oh, I got it. Then one smile only was the thing that I was supposed to do in that place. And that mall that I went there, I don't know why. It was just to smile to one person and that's it. I don't need to be there anymore. I don't need to be here anymore, so I'm going to get out. That's okay. I don't even need to shop any bags or anything anymore, right? It was just a smile that I had to give to someone. And then maybe you change the entire life of that person and you don't even know. But it's not important. That it's is, not important. That is so true. It is. Mm -hmm. Something that I never forgot. My grandmother passed away like 15 years ago, but she told a story. And this lady, too, the lady used to be her hairdresser. Right. And uh, this lady had had a divorce, whatever, she had been very depressed. This day she decided to kill herself. So she was heading to the uh, pharmacy, to the drugstore that was in, in Rio, in Brazil. So she was walking there to buy whatever she was going to suicide way. And uh, she runs into my, my grandmother. And my grandmother had, had always been speed. Right. And uh, my grandmother looked at her and says, you've got to do me a favor. She didn't know why. She did not need to do her hair. But somebody talked through her and, and they said, you need to do my hair. I just had no idea. I really have something important to do now. And my grandmother said, please, I've been with you for 20 years. I need you today right now. And then she thought to herself, well, I'm going to do her hair. I don't want anybody to be suspicious. Afterwards, I'll go to the drugstore. By the end of the day, I'm dead. Anyway, it doesn't matter. She went, she started talking with my mother, then with my grandmother. She started crying. She told her whole story, her intentions to get killed, whatever. And uh, then that's when the fish Yeah, she got it, right? She said, wow, that's why this crazy, sudden necessity to do my hair, which I never do more than Yeah. You guys see, we have, we just had a testimony here about the, the situation that we were talking about. So whoever didn't listen, the, the, the people online, you know, mainly the people online, because we were talking about, you know, we don't know what we're doing or why we are in that right place at that moment and that second with that person. And then all of a sudden, the only thing you have to do is something that, you know, just listen, just watch and pray and listen to, you know, and connect yourself. And then, of course, you do something. And when you do something with that person, in this case, was a person, a hairdresser of her grandma who was killed herself. Uh, uh, yeah, who was, you know, yeah, she was going to kill herself. And then grandma came, to, came up to her, of course, following her, you know, connections, I would say. And then said to, her, to the hairdresser, she was heading to the drugstore to buy whatever pills, you know, she needed to kill herself. And then grandma came up to her and then she said, okay, you, you, I got to do my hair. Can you do my hair now? All of a sudden, because she didn't need to do, the, you know, the hair. And then that happened. The hairdresser went, not to be suspicious or anything, went to do her, you know, her hair. And then start crying and they start talking. And then, you know, that moment saved her life. You see, and of course, you see, and of course she was grateful, which is the best part of it, right? Of course. So that's what it is. So God placed us exactly where we need to be. Sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes we don't want to see it. Sometimes we don't pay attention because we so we are so uh into the prisons or we are so into the, those dark places we talked about sometimes we just lost the key and we don't know so but that's truth and we just were proved right and why we are going to lose the key continuing 
And then he said in the, in the book, do not let the shadow of some hours, because sometimes the despair takes an hour, a second. Then he said, do not let the shadow of some hours extinguish the light of centuries, centuries to come. Because we are so, I would say, uh, we want things now, right? We only see now. We only see maybe not even the entire day. We just see the five minutes ahead of us and the five minutes right, you know, back there. Not even an hour. Sometimes we forget the benefits that we've had before during the day. And sometimes we don't even know where to go. Because I don't want to know where, where am, I, am I going, like, you know, the next hour. But the next five minutes I got to be here. But we got to think as a whole. Because it is. Everything is connected. So we have to think about this. So sometimes you have one shadow right this minute here, which is like, you know, uh, covering up everything that you can see. But if we want, we just open it up. Just open it up. And don't let this shadow of one second distinguish whatever we have to learn for centuries to come. That lesson that we have the testimonial here, that spirit of the hairdresser, and I'm not talking about the hairdresser now in this incarnation, I'm talking the spirit, never going to forget. And probably never going to try to kill herself again in any other reincarnation. We cannot say 100%, of course not, because I'm not her, <laughs> but probably was one of the most valuable lessons in her life, right? Why we are, not, uh, we are going to lose the key? So let's not think that death by itself will open the doors to freedom, because sometimes we are so despaired that we think about killing ourselves, which we just talked about it, right? So don't think that death itself is going to just open the doors to freedom. Just follow the law. Follow God's laws everywhere. And then God is going to guide us. Get close to God. Don't be afraid to get close to God. It's not a religious thing. Don't feel that way. God is not religious. God is love. That's truth. Sorry to say that. Because religion has nothing to do with God. God is love. So don't be afraid to get close to God. Don't be ashamed to get close to God. Don't be ashamed to say to everyone that you are close friends to God. Because that's the most beautiful thing that could happen and could save you as well. So be, you know, a plus, I would say. <laughs> so it is time to awake our asleep consciousness. So we need to be awakened. We need to be aware of everything. It is time. So we stop with those as, as sleep times. Okay, let's wake up because we need to because we cannot be prisoners anymore. And if we are, and I know we are for some things, I know we are. We can know a bunch of things, we can learn a bunch of things in this spiritual center and during you know, the entire life of ours, but we are prisoners of some little situations if not the ones we talked about in many others, but we are prisoners. So let's find that key. I'm not going to put any adjective before the key. Let's find the key, you know, because that's what matters. Let's find the key, because we need to find the key. I feel exhausted because I'm working a lot. Only you can find that key. And stop doing what you're doing and doing the, you start doing differently. Oh, because it is important because I have to. Not more important than your life. Not more important than your kids. Not more important than your wife. Not any more important than your friends. Not more. Im right? It's, it is even worse. Drugs. Only you can find the key. Unfortunately, you're going to be helped. You're going to be helped for sure with medicine, with the rehab, with psychologists, with a bunch of things around you. 
spiritual treatment as well, uh, whatever you think of. But who is the one able to get out of there? The spirit itself. Only the spirit can find the key. So we have to be aware, we have to watch, because the key is right in front of us. But sometimes we are used to the situation, and as I said before, it doesn't hurt anymore, right? Let's work now and get out of our prisons. Just the thing that I said. Because we got to do it now. We got to think it now. And I'm not saying now like this life. No, again, I'm talking now. Oh, but I tried and it didn't work. Try again. Okay, but I tried twice. Try the third time. But I tried yesterday all day long. Now I don't know what to do. Try again. There is no way out. We have to try. And sometimes, oh, no, but it's, Mauro, you go up there, and then you do, and then you speak, and then you say all those things. But you don't do those things. Of course not. I'm not perfect. I'm trying. Probably I'm here because I need to listen. I need to hear, hear more than you guys because, you know, so close here, my mouth and the, and the ears, probably because I, I need to make an effort more than you guys. But I'm willing to. It's going to be a half of a second of learning, of trying, and I'm going to do half of a second a right thing against 23 hours and 59 minutes and blah, blah, blah of wrong things. Good. Half second. Already good. Tomorrow probably is going to be one second. We never know. But it is per second, step by step. No, no way, step by step, only this way we're going to be able to get out of where we are at now, right? Prisons. The love, of the, fa- the love of the Father is divine Son to radiate through all the magnificence of the soul. So why we are going to lose the key if we have the love of our Father? And do I know I have the love of, of, of the Father with me? We have to be aware of it. We have to make sure we do. Because it is the most important thing. And that's also <coughs> called, sometimes, faith. Because some things we have just to believe. Believe that God's going to be there for us. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, we have to walk, we have to move, right? But I don't know what I'm going to find right there, my next step. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, step out of your place. God's going to place the ground, you know, under you. Don't worry about it. The ground's going to be there. The surface is going to be there for you to step on it. Don't worry. Don't think about it. Because if you think about what I'm going to find, you know, in my next step, if I'll have a floor or surface or ground, you know, my next step, I'm not going to do the step. I'm not going to make it happen because I'm going to be afraid. Right? Afraid to fall. And why are we going to be afraid to fall if we are imperfect ones? We're not perfect. We have to fail in order to learn. We have to. Right? Remember that our Father does not attach himself to our particularism as fallible creatures, as we said. And he does not forget that we have inalienable work duties. I like that word, right? Exercising the precious resource he has given to us in order to achieve one day the perfection of wisdom and love. So he doesn't forget us. He already given us everything that we have around us, everything, materialistic things, people, And people, I mean, wife, kids, friends, enemies, maybe, as well, because we learn with them as well. I mean, everything, everybody, every single thing, dogs, all the pets, and flowers, (laughs) and the forests, and and, then cars, and whatever, you can name it. He's already giving those things to us, so we can learn how to deal with those things. We can exercise ourselves 
like dealing with those things in this life so we can one day during this reincarnation process that you know we live day by day because it is a day by day thing and life by life then we one day we're gonna reach perfection oh when doesn't matter I don't know maybe I have to learn a lot I like this learning process anyway I don't need to be you know perfect tomorrow I don't think I'm gonna reach this perfection you know sooner me myself maybe <laughs> it's gonna take a while <laughs> so again just to remind you guys after all these things everyone can end up prisoner we only need to lose the key and everyone can set yourself free we only need to find the key and the key again and I bring you guys again the key is our friend know thyself start with this looking for yourself inside of each one's heart because when we're looking for ourselves inside of us we are looking for God inside of us because he is in here because we are sons of God and then we have his DNA with us so he is inside of us so let's start looking for this looking for ourselves and looking for God and now after this I'm gonna let you guys enjoy again the same video and then you're gonna watch it differently I know for sure go out there, please sure we're gonna watch it differently now paying attention to each one thing you, you want to turn it off it's coming we hope <laughs> we don't lose the hope Yes and no, yes and no. You can go without the subtitles quoted if you want. I'm seeing what he's doing. You guys are not. Play it without it. Can anyone tell him to play without the subtitles, please? Yeah. It's just because you know when we repeat the, the the video, I like this thing because when we repeat the video after thinking about every single thing, for sure we're gonna we're gonna watch it differently and we're gonna think about those things and we're gonna see things that we didn't. Que isso? Onde é que eu tô? 
Isso aqui é uma prisão? Ou, oh, por que que me prenderam aqui? Eu sou inocente! Gente, eu não tô me lembrando de nada. Eu tava conversando com a Raquel e eu vi... Ou, oh, por que que me prenderam? Eu não tenho direito a um advogado, não! Tenho o direito de permanecer calado. Dá pra parar de gritar? Cara, eu sou inocente. Eu não sei o que aconteceu. Eu, eu tava conversando com a minha esposa e de repente eu parei aqui. Eu não me lembro de nada, cara. Se você não lembra de nada, como é que você tá falando que é inocente? Deve ter esquecido. Você bebe? Não, eu não bebo, eu não bebo, eu não fumo. Eu sou certinho. Eu sou certinho até demais. Cara, e certinhos também são presos, parceiro. Que parceiro? Olha aqui, meu irmão, não sou parceiro de bandido não, tá ok? Alguém, por favor, alguém me tira daqui, alguém me escuta. Você tá falando com quem, amigo? Sei lá com quem eu tô falando, eu tô falando com quem me prendeu. Alguém aí, por favor. Ninguém te prendeu aqui, parceiro. Olha aqui, meu nome é João, cara. Você mesmo entrou aqui sozinho. Aliás, não tem outro jeito de entrar aqui nem de sair, parceiro. Você tá maluco? Quem é que se prende por vontade própria? Eu? Você? Tanta gente? Alguém, por favor, alguém me tira da mesma cela que esse maluco aqui, por favor? Que maluco é você, rapaz. Que fica gritando, falando sozinho. Que que é isso? Que que você tá fazendo com a foto da Raquel? Raquel? Hã, parece mais a Juliana. Eu tava tentando adivinhar o nome. O que, que você tá fazendo com a foto da Raquel na mão? Fala logo. Ela caiu da sua mão quando você entrou na cela. Ela é o quê? Tua namorada? Esposa. Quer dizer, ela ontem me pediu o divórcio. Mas ela não vai se ver livre de mim, não vai. Tá entendendo? E pelo jeito, nem eu, né? Meu Deus. Será que eu fiz alguma coisa com a Raquel ontem à noite? Você gostava muito dela, né? Gostava? Eu amo a minha esposa, cara. Eu amo ela mais do que tudo. Mais do que tudo? Então pode puxar uma cadeira que tu vai ficar aqui por muito tempo. Não é, Pedro? Oi, só um minuto. Papai já fala com você, filho. Falta só mais um relatório. Papai depois leva você no cinema, tá bom? Ih, não esquenta a cabeça com o Pedro, não. Vive ocupado. Se quiser fazer amizade mesmo, é com esse outro cara aí, bem mais simpático. Ué, eu não tô ocupado, eu tô comendo. Tô mais feliz, você vai ficar? Não, não, valeu. Tu quer, parceiro? Que parceiro, meu irmão? Já disse que eu não sou parceiro de bandido? Meu nome é João. É, João. Tá vendo? João. Sabe ler? Só mais um gole. Aqui ninguém é bandido, rapaz. Aqui ninguém nunca matou, nunca roubou, coisa parecida. Aqui só tem pessoas do bem, honestas. Que meu carregador. Tentando viver nossas vidas. É mentira, cara, é mentira. Você tava ameaçando a Raquel, não é? Ô, dá pra fazer silêncio aí, eu tô trabalhando. Fala. Liberdade é mais do que andar solto por aí, parceiro. Que isso, hein, Aqui né? todo mundo também é certinho, João. Você bebe? Mas é como eu disse. Os certinhos, um dia também podem acabar presos. É só perder a chave. João, eu amo ela mais do que tudo. Mas ela não vai se ver livre de mim, não vai. Ai, meu Deus, tô muito gorda. Você é a Nora que a mamãe pediu. Ai, meu Deus, um por cento de bateria. Acho que se eu passar lá em três vezes dá, hein? Só mais um gole, vai ser só mais um gole. Take care of ourselves and find our keys. Today, we're gonna end up spirits, prisoners of ourselves in the spiritual world as well. So let's think about it. Go, each one of yourselves, for your keys. Thank you.